Hey boys and girls, Ken Smith, Ken Smith Fishing. So, uh, we're going, this is going to be part two of the prop video, which I am really enjoying doing. Uh, this reminds me of when I first started doing the bass boat reviews and how much fun I had. Not that that wasn't fun all the way through, and I've still got a few to do, but anyway. Um, so let's do real quick the spark drawing uh, for this week's winter. Uh, obviously, we, we've really uh, gained traction with the spark fishing program so that even if you're not a spark customer you can win money if you want to know more about that check that video right there out i just looked at the results so this is saturday afternoon i'm recording this you guys will see it tuesday uh, fourth place at amstead double header bass champs at amstead mike perkins and stan grizzini g-e-r-z-e-n-y-i -E -E um won ten thousand two hundred dollars that is more than Second, third, fourth, and fifth place, and probably sixth place combined. Four thousand of that was spark money, so that's that's way cool. Uh, and then they also won the James Woods money. So those are guys who know how to get contingency money. So a lot more. There's more contingency money. By the time you guys see this, there'll be a second, probably payout tomorrow at the second champ, past chance tournament down there. So anyway, let's do a quick drawing for this name right here, and it is. Dave Disler, D-I-S-L-E-R, from Conroe, Texas. Dave, congratulations, you're this week's Spark winner. So, let's dive into part two of our prop video. So, if you haven't seen prop video number one, I'll post it right there at the top. It might behoove you to go back and watch that video. But today, let's dive a little more into the specifics of props. And I can tell you, so, I've gotten a ton of feedback on this. So many of us are interested because we all want to have better performance out of our boat. But look, these props run, a bottom end prop is probably $600. So dealerships don't carry a whole bunch of stock. And now there is some loaner programs available. But you know, you're not going to find a dealer with six different 24 and 25 pitch props most of the time. So you got to do a lot of homework early on to figure out what props you should even be trying. And that's the process I'm working through here. As I talked about, we've actually already talked to some prop experts. And by the way, I want to give a shout out to Ken Addington. A lot of you Dallas guys know, or North Texas guys know Ken. He is a speed freak. Um, and he helped me a lot with some of the concepts and me talking through not quite understanding some of the stuff I read. And by the way, part of the problem with this is a whole bunch of what's online is literally not years old, but decades old. There's some great articles, but there, uh, there's some great articles out there, but a lot of them are 20 and 30 years old. So um, anyway, so we've already talked a little bit about just, just from Mercury, how many props are available and how confusing that can be. So. Let's now talk a little bit more about the specifics of how a prop works and some of the things that are different prop to prop. So this was really interesting to me, and again, kind of something I hadn't thought about very much. So on a propeller, there is both a positive side or a positive pressure side of a propeller, and there's a negative pressure side of the propeller. And so basically what those two things done do is, and so you see on this case, the direction the boat would be traveling, the negative side is, has a pulling effect, so it pulls the water to the prop, and the positive side has a pushing effect. And the next slide just kind of shows a little bit of what that looks like, but if you read about how this functions, it's a lot just like, I mean, basically the same thing as a fan in your house would. It's pulling water from an area a little bigger than the diameter of the prop into the prop and then spitting it out. In a, in, a, in a thrust, if you will, about the diameter of the prop, and that's where you're getting basically the thrust to create forward momentum to push you down the lake. So basically the, the, the pulling of the water and the pushing it out at a higher velocity, which adds momentum to the water, that change in momentum or that acceleration of the water is what we call thrust. That's where thrust comes from, and that's what pushes us down the lake. So ideally, you want to create all the thrust you can with the horsepower that's available to the boat. So let's talk a little bit more about that. Now, another thing that you need to understand with a prop is the rake of a prop. And this is a, a uh, the top part is something I found online. And basically you see the rake, if you will, Let's find something to work with. So let's assume that's your prop shaft, or excuse me, your tube on your propeller. 
and that's your blade of your propeller, okay? That would be, if it's perpendicular to the, to the uh, tube, that would be basically a zero degree rate prop. And as you decrease that, excuse me, as you increase that rake angle, okay, you basically get more and more ballot. And by the way, so there is, as you can see on uh, figures four, six and four, seven, there is a flat rake, right? And then there is a curved rake. What you'll find is generally speaking, uh, rate, the increase of your rake rate, if you will, will give you more and more bow lift, but then there is a point that goes too far and you get too much bow lift, so you start sort of launching that boat as opposed to propelling that boat, if you will. And it talks here about when that starts happening on those super light, super fast boats with very little drag, either hydrodynamic drag from the water or aerodynamic drag from the air, then you move more to a cleaver style prop. Now, one other note here we'll talk more about in just a second, but those more curved or the higher rake props, as you get into a surfacing application, okay? So, do, 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 let's just use my book here as an example, okay? Top of the water, right? Water line. When you start getting that tube, or the lower unit, if you will, when it starts surfacing, when it starts getting to the top of the water, then what you'll find is a higher rake prop does a better job, and it makes sense, if you will. It sort of captures that water and is now throwing that water behind the boat, so it's creating more centrifugal force. We'll talk more about surfacing Sportsmaster versus non-surfacing Torque Master lower units in just, a mech, in just a second. But just at a high level, that's what rake is on a prop. Now, and I mentioned a second ago, a cleaver prop. So I just put in there, that's the 300 horsepower, five blade CNC cleaver prop, basically for mercury racing. Now, there's also cup in a prop. And you can see from this diagram, although it's not the most beautiful diagram, it makes perfect sense. You see a cupped prop, right? So at the end of that prop, it's got a cup in it. And you see an uncupped prop. Generally speaking, again, generally speaking, adding cup will also add bow lift. But where the cup is on a propeller blade makes a difference. So these diagrams do a great job of showing that. So cupping along the pitch lines increases pitch. Cupping along the rake lines, the, the long axis, if you will, of the propeller ear, actually uh, changes the rake on a prop. So that's cupping, and again, where it is on the blade. And you'll see props who have it most of the time through most of the ear of that prop, not always, but you're both changing the pitch and you're changing the rake a little bit by putting cup in a prop. So one other thought on cupping. Generally, adding cup will reduce your RPMs by some number. Now, the article I read said 100 to 300. I don't know exactly what size boats or what else they were talking about, but it because it changes the dynamics of that prop it will actually lower your rpms which doesn't necessarily mean you lower the speed of the boat you just lower the rpms of the boat we'll, we'll talk later when we talk with our prop expert about the correlation between speed rpms also about the difference between horsepower and torque and then also uh, about uh, slippage we'll talk about that as well Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about the number of ears or the number of blades on a propeller. So theoretically speaking, the most efficient propeller would have a single blade. Now, you can't do that because of the vibration. So a two-blade propeller has, because you now have more weight distribution, it's going to have less vibration. But what you'll see in most of our applications, which are outboard or some of you guys are stern drive guys, you're going to see most props run three, four, or five blades. Now, again, generally speaking, efficiency goes down as you add blades to your prop. So, again, generally speaking, the best performing from a miles per gallon prop would be a three-blade prop for most applications. Now, there are props on every hull. Again, back to our first video, there's art and there's science. There are props on every hole that will perform more efficiently than other props and a lot of that has to do with prop slip which we'll talk about. But generally for most of it it's going to be a three or a four blade prop until you start having a prop that surfaces the boat. And that only occurs for a very very few of us by the way. 
so for those folks, and by the way, now I've, I've read a bunch about this. Again, I've been down so many rabbit holes. Um, but generally speaking, when you start getting to those surfacing props, because you have props hitting the water so many times in every revolution of a propeller, then uh, that weight distribution slash vibration starts to become a factor, which is why part of why you see guys go into four and five, and in some cases even six and seven blade propellers. So you get less vibration. But the other reason for that is it just keeps more blade propellers or parts of blade propellers in the water more often to create more thrust. If you only have three blades on a propeller, if you think about that, then, when, and, and I'm going to show you some pictures in a minute, when half of that prop tube is, is out of the water, well then basically you don't have a whole heck of a lot. You've got basically about one and a half propeller blades in the water at any given time. If you go to a four blade, you immediately put basically two five blade you put two and a half propeller ears in the water at any time. That's why if you go back to the bullet video he was running I think a four or five and one of Mercury's most popular racing props excuse me, uh, from the racing side of it is the high five. So for me I think of a four or five blade prop as a rough water prop because it allows me to get more torque when I need to control the nose of that boat. But now when we're start talking about a surfacing application it's more about speed. So we'll talk more about that in just a minute. So we talked about this just a second ago. This is a video, and, and by the way, it, they say on YouTube, never direct somebody away from your own channel. But I gotta tell you, Fast Bass, F-A-S-T-B-A-S-S, -S, has some crazy videos. Uh, they're Allison guys mostly, I think maybe all Allison guys, but they have mounted a GoPro or some kind of a camera on the bottom of the boat and they're looking backwards at that prop, and it's some crazy stuff. Uh, I know what I started to say a second ago, and maybe if I already said this, I apologize, but I don't think I did. So I, read, I have read a bunch of different places that in general, if you have a setup, a, a boat weighing 1,400-ish pounds or more, you're not gonna get the performance out of a surfacing lower unit that you would out of a submerged, and that's probably not the right word, but out of a lower unit that doesn't service. And likewise, you're not gonna get the performance out of some of these props. So for most of us, again, I'm going down some, some different paths here, but for most of us, these props, these cleaver style props, these four and five, or these five and six blade props really aren't gonna help us. They're actually gonna hurt us, and we'll talk about that here in just a second. So I've already mentioned rabbit holes, so uh, this is one of them I went down, and again, this is one of them where I saw so many different, I saw so much misinformation about this. But basically, you got cleaver props and you got chopper props. Cleaver props, so on the left here, so a cleaver prop basically means, I mean, if you think about it, it actually looks a little bit like a meat cleaver, but you see what one looks like right here, and basically what it is, is uh, on the left, it is that uh, squared off back trailing edge, if you will. And a cleaver prop can be a through, through hub exhaust system or a over hub exhaust system. Whereas a chopper prop, which you see over on the right, what a chopper prop means is it is an over the hull, excuse me, over the prop exhaust system. Okay, so let me say that to you again. Cleaver props can be, have the exhaust leaving the lower unit go over the blades of the prop or they can have it go through the hub or not go over the blades of the prop other than when we're ventilating, which we'll talk about in a second. A chopper prop always has the exhaust going over the blades of the prop. Now, I got real hung up on this because as I thought about it, I said, well, wait a minute, anytime exhaust would be going over the blade, I mean, what you want to get the best performance out of a prop is you want the, you want nothing impeding the water going over the surface of that prop because that's what that's what makes you go fast, right? So why, how in the world would the exhaust escaping over the surface of a prop not create tremendous slippage and just terrible performance? Well, that's why you only run, that's why the best performance, and you should generally speaking, only run over the over the prop exhaust 
on a surfacing application. Because again, what happens now is my prop shaft has surfaced and although the, the exhaust is escaping around the prop, it's escaping around the part of the prop that's not in the water. Because basically, if you think about it, there would be suction there, right? There's a lot less resistance for the, the exhaust to escape above the water than the, below the water. So that's why you don't lose a bunch of efficiency with a, with a over the, I keep saying the wrong thing, over the tube, if you will, or over the blade part of the prop exhaust system. And there's also, I read in here, and let me just find it real quick, and I want to repeat it exactly the way I read it. This, so this is, again, from an article I found. Uh, when, a, when a cleaver style blade runs deep where surface air can't ventilate the low, the low pressure side of the prop, then basically cavitations, cavitation pockets form behind that trailing edge, and therefore they become super inefficient. So you've got that low pressure problem with them, but you also have the fact, if it's not surfacing, that your um, exhaust would be going around the prop and you would be not getting clean water, if you will, going over the surface of the prop. Generally speaking, also, I have read that cleaver style props have po the poorest hole shot of most style props. Um, but again, that's just what I've read, and that's a question I'm going to have for our prop expert. So again, there's a whole bunch of rabbit holes here. I'm going to talk more about that prop that's on the right, right there in just a second. But generally speaking, a cleaver style prop will lift the stern or the transom of the boat, and a chopper style prop will lift the nose. And what makes a chopper style prop work really well is trim the motor up so you can run it neutral trim. Okay, what the heck is neutral trim? Neutral trim is this. It means that you want to have the boat, if you will, you want to have the prop shaft running parallel to the surface of the water. Okay, And if you do that, you're propelling all the water directly behind you as opposed to up or down. And that's where you get the optimum performance out of almost any lightweight or racing style boat. And, and, and here's the reason why. Actually, let's go back to our picture of the bass cat there. So what you can see here is... That bass cat is in some level of positive trim. Actually, you know what? I think I found a better picture of that somewhere else. There we go. That's another. Yeah, that's a different picture. But you see there, that boat's attitude in the water is slightly upward. That means the motor is trimmed in a positive trim attitude, and it's lifting the nose of that boat, which is why, by the way, we can't get optimum performance out of most of the boats we run. And, and I'm going to say there's three or four boats. I call them specialty boats. Some guys call them tournament bass fishing boats. But the boats that would be boats that can run at or really near neutral trim, in my mind, would be the, certainly the Allison boats, the bullet boats. I don't know about a gambler boat. I think the ballistic boat is really close to it. And there's a, a, a boat that they don't make a lot of them, but not of those, but the stroker boat as well. So those are the style boats that can run surfacing props and can and really get those props up out of the water and can run at a at a neutral trim position. So you can see there, that's why I stuck that cleaver style prop in there and said, yeah, really not something you can run. Uh, and you know what I realized after I did all this, I did stick this slide in here where I talked about exactly what we were talking about with that cleaver style prop, where you have the positive and the negative sign. And again, it's specific. So this would be a cleaver over the prop exhaust system, right? So it's a small hub. Um, and this would be a prop that would be ideally designed specifically for um, a boat that can run a surfacing application. And by the way, so I, I mentioned this, I wanted to talk about this just real quick. So that prop that was on that slide earlier is this prop right here. This is the Lightning ET. It's a mercury prop. It's lab finished. And what that basically means is when you buy most props um, it doesn't matter if it's Mercury or Yamaha or whatever else. When props come out of a, when, the, when they come out of a forge, if you will, and I think I'm using the right term there, as they cool, things move around. And anybody who's ever had a prop worked will tell you, if you take most sort of retail props from any maker and you take them to a custom prop shop, they're going to tell you that 
the blades generally are not exact, right? You might get a three blade 25 pitch prop that two blades are 25 pitch and one's 26 pitch. And that's just a function of uh, mass produced props that aren't taken to a lab. And, and the term you'll hear often is blueprinted. And what that means, and by the way, this is an ugly process if you've ever seen one of these custom prop guys. They literally take a hammer to your prop to get them done, but they place them on something called a plop, prop block. And when they blueprint those props, kind of job one is to get all of those ears at the same pitch angle. Uh, and it's, again, art and science. And then you'll also hear a lot of times when they do those blueprinting, they also start taking some metal off those props. So they start thinning those blades down because obviously uh, in, in the smaller the blade, the easier it is to turn through the water. The more RPMs you can get, the more thrust you can get. The reason I talk specifically about this prop, this is what Mercury define or calls a lab finished prop, which means they have done all of that for you already. This is a $1,400 or $1,500 prop from anybody. But this particular prop is one of the most popular props. When you see those videos of those guys driving boats 100 plus miles an hour, specifically bass boats, most of them are running this prop. And believe it or not, guys take this prop and then send it out and get it worked on even more. Um, for me, I'm not going to spend $1,500 on a prop and run around Sam Rayburn because I would, the first day I had it out, I would hit something. Uh, but again, I just want to talk a little bit about that prop for those guys that want to go super duper fast. So I know this video is getting long, but I want to talk really quickly about this. We're going to talk more about this on a later video. But specifically to Mercury, they make basically two lower units. They make the Torque Master lower unit, which is this lower unit right here. And I found a pretty good picture of it on the right there uh, of that lower unit running. And you can see it runs pretty high in the water column, right? But the prop, the vast majority of the prop, if not all the prop, will generally, speak, generally speaking be in the water at all times. As a, and by the way, you can see on that prop where the water pickups are, kind of up there above the tube, if you will, of the, of the lower unit, as opposed to a Sportmaster prop. And I'll show you in a later video where the pickups are on it because it's cool. But you can see here, there's a Sportmaster off a video I found running on the back of a 20XD and you can see that is in fact a surfacing application uh, so I just want to show you kind of what that looked like and so by the way the next picture and I love I kind of picture Santa Claus running the bass boat but you can see here I talked about this earlier those top two boats would be an over trimmed boat they're throwing water up in the air as a boat as opposed to directly behind them so they're not getting the full thrust that they should out of their boat or out of their motor excuse me as opposed to down there on the bottom, and it looks like that's probably a bull, an Allison, and a bass cat I found pictures of, where you can see they're throwing that water right out behind them, almost directly behind them. That's a properly trimmed to go super fast uh, position for a boat. Um, quickly skew simply says, if you look at that second, uh, uh, or the, the diagram on the left, when you start bending those prop, or when you start turning those uh, blades sideways, that's increasing the skew on a prop. Really not too much for us to talk about because of what we do. But what you would note, I thought it was interesting, uh, they call those weedless or more weedless props when you increase the skew. Which, by the way, if you look at pretty much any trolling motor propeller at this point, they have a high level of skew for exactly that reason to make them more, um, to make them, to make them more weedless. All right, I had planned to get into ventilation and some other issues on this, but. Uh, that's pretty far into this. So obviously we have at least another video, if not two, about this um, to talk just to get to the basics of understanding props to start talking about how to find the best prop on your boat. So I hope that's been helpful for you. When we come back on the next video, which will probably be later this week, we'll start talking about ventilation, what it's for, uh, and then we're also going to talk about calf plates, which is the wrong term. And we're going to get more into angle of attack and some other things that I think if you're still interested in this, which I have become really interested in this, you're going to find more interesting on our endeavor to find the best prop for my boat and for your boat going forward in the future, whether it's a bass boat, a runabout, a ski boat, a go fast boat, a pontoon boat, whatever it is. I think there's specific props designed just for those applications and we'll figure them out together. 
and we're going to get some more prop experts to talk about it. So stick around. Part three of this will be up very, very shortly. Thanks, guys.